that I will set up one of your descendants after you who will be one of your sons and I will establish his kingdom. And he shall build for me a house and I will establish his throne, get this, forever. Forever. I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son and I will not take my loving kindness away from him as I took it from him who was before you. But I will settle him in my house and in my kingdom forever. And his throne shall be established forever according to all... Yeah, right there. Yeah, uh, forever. So here we see this is, this is an eternal reign. This is an eternal reign on the throne. So, yes, it is talking... You will have a son, Solomon, who comes and he will sit on your throne. But it goes beyond that and say, I'm talking beyond what you can imagine, baby. I'm talking about an eternally reigning king. Who's telling David this? What do you say? Who's telling David this? Um, okay, so uh, do you look at verse 15? Yeah. This is God speaking. Oh, through, God speaking. Yeah, through the prophet Nathan. Okay. He was a friend of his. Okay. Um, uh, to David. Okay, about what's going to happen. Yep. Okay. Yep. And when he says eternally, is he referring to when we go up in the rapture and we're looking over kingdoms? Uh, no. 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 He's yeah. speaking of Christ will reign as king mm -hmm. forever. Okay. Forever. Yeah. Yeah. He will always be um, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Um, he will always be the king of the Jews, um, as was hanging on a sign above above him as he's hanging on the cross. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Um, and and so you see Jesus is a fulfillment of this promise. Um, look at Jeremiah, turn to the right. It's a little bit after Psalms, Isaiah. Jeremiah. Yeah, Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5 and 6. <clears throat> Chapter five? Uh, 23. 23, verse 5 and 6. Okay. Um, Jeremiah 23, 5 and 6. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord. So this is God talking through the prophet Jeremiah. When I will raise up for David a righteous branch, this is like a descendant, think of a family tree, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he will reign as king and act wisely and do justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And I love this right here. And this is his name by which he will be called, the Lord our righteousness. The Lord our righteousness. This is beyond a human that it's prophesying about. This is this is the Lord our righteousness that it's talking about. Um, and we see in, in, in Christ that 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 He is our righteousness. He became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God in Him. You know, Second Corinthians five twenty one. Um, and I will go. There's how, how might we interpret like. Uh, Beginning of verse six, in his days. In, yeah. his, in his days. Yeah. In in his days, in Judah will be saved. Is this his days, or or was that his days? When is this his days, or was that his days? Yeah. Um, first of all, I'm not going to pretend to fully understand it, but I do have some understanding. Okay. Um. So Israel. Um. Israel is um, is a, a foreshadowing of the church. If you look in Galatians three, um, not not all Israel is Israel. Not and it, it says it says um, this is. I mean, it's, we're talking Romans nine, ten, eleven, Galatians three, elsewhere. Um, you, what you what you see is that it's those that that are of the faith. Those that are of the faith of Abraham are the children of Abraham. Okay, and so, so um, you you have that reality. Israel is a national bloodline of people, but it's beyond that. Um, not it says not all Israel is Israel in in Rome. It says not all Israel is Israel. Meaning, just because you have Abraham's blood in you, doesn't mean that you are counted among the children of God. 
Uh, you're not saved, uh, John 1, 12 and 13. Um, it says you're not saved by this and that, this and that. And, um, and, and, it, and it speaks in there of, of, of your bloodline. You know, you're saved by the will of God. Mm -hmm. And so um, and you're saved by the sovereign grace of God. You're saved by the gospel. Right, um, and this is one of the things that the Jewish people got wrong, and it led to self righteousness, them thinking they were better than others. Um, but so, so you have that reality of who really is Israel, okay? And it doesn't mean that Jewish people aren't God's eternal children. It just means you're not you're not God's eternally saved child just because you have a certain blood in you, right? Um, it's the, you're saved by grace through faith. And so the fullness of Israel is revealed, um, the fullness of who Israel is revealed in the very end after he comes again when we see who it is that's worshiping him, okay? That's when we'll know that is the fullness of Israel. And so, um, <clears throat> so you have in his days, uh, 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 Judah will be saved, Israel will dwell securely. And what you hear, see here in Judah and Israel is you see there, at this time, um, there's a division among God's people. Um, and, and Christ comes and he unifies God's people. And so, um, and you have also in his days, what are his days, really? He, what we know is he's an eternally reigning <coughs> king. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So his days are, like, are, are beyond, you know, does that make sense? Yep. You still see their misunderstanding today about that because you you have people who are not Jewish blood wise who claim to be Jewish by religion mm -hmm. and then the opposite of that you also have people who claim to be Jewish who are not religious at all but they claim the bloodline mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. so it's, 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 it's just a misunderstanding that's become out of hand yeah Mike and we got a cousin who's, who's marrying a, a, a mm -hmm. Jewish blood blood woman, and he's being confirmed in, in Judaism. Like it's a six month course apparently. Yeah, and, you know how it works. But. So the Jew, I, and I don't mean to belabor this. I know you got, but but Judah at the time that that, that Christ was born. Oh, so Christ was born. Yeah. Judah. I see. I didn't know that. No. I mean, the, the, the entire Israel, Judah, they were both in servitude to, to Rome, right? Mm -hmm. Judah, was, were, was yeah. Judah still a distinct entity, or what, were, was it just Israel at that point because everything was lost? Um, at what point? Uh, when, when Christ was born. Um, what was the, what, for us, you would know, what was the, um, what was the status of Israel um, when Christ was born, I know in, as it relates know. to that. I, I don't know specifically the answer to your question. I know, so, um, the kingdom was divided um, between Judah and Israel. All of it was Israel, and then Judah was divided off when they split over who was the rightful king. Mm -hmm. And then both of the nations were at, at, at David. Times. It was at David. No, it was at... Um, no, it was right after David. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So this the next yeah. one after yeah. David. Yeah. Absolutely. Son. Yeah. Um, the uh, um, both Judah and Israel were exiled by Persia and Babylon. Both eventually were restored. Um, so I know by this time they were they were back in the land. I don't know if they <coughs> consider it, and, and then obviously Rome took and they, over. And they were under Jewish rule because Herod was a Jew. Oh. Yeah, and they were given because freedom. Because that's what Rome did was Rome appointed mm -hmm. regional mm -hmm. consulates or kings or whatever you want to call them mm -hmm. to rule their regions. Mm -hmm. So do you know if, if it was Judah and Israel both? They were they separate, were but they were they were they were of themselves under the same description, but they were separate. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like it was kind of like a they were all Jewish, but they were like some were shunned, some were you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah like 
they um, they were looked differently. They, they like absolutely like when when the when the people in Jerusalem looked at the Jews in Galilee and thought they were basically the next thing above the Gentiles, mm -hmm. but they were nowhere near the status that the people in Jerusalem were. That's kind of the viewing that you had of it. God. Was it was all Israel. And, and the, but you had Judah who was like oh, and then you had like the rest of Israel that was like eh. well that makes sense because there's um, mm -hmm. like in Acts there's uh, mm -hmm. Acts 1 um, Jesus says he's sending his uh, his disciples out into Judah I'm sorry Jerusalem Judah, Judah Israel it's Judah Judah yeah Judah that's yeah. actually the same yeah, it's different oh, it's, it's a different. region yeah. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, so um, just to get back on track, and, and there's a lot to this is a whole different conversation we could have. And Nick, just forgive me for not being able to provide a, a strong answer for that. Um, remember how I said a couple weeks ago, my weakness is in narrative. My my weakness is in the Old Testament narr like the narrative stories. I really struggle with them, and sometimes I, I'll read it and I don't remember. But in, in, when I see Christ in it, then I'm yeah. like, yeah, yeah, I'll remember it forever. But yeah. that, I mean, that's the kind of thing, you know, if, if I wanted to research it, I could find that out pretty quickly, I'm sure. Yeah, I yeah. Just, I, um, well, ask I Space, see. she's really good yeah. on Israel's history. Um, yeah, you can ask her. She's a good one. Um, and I, and I, I, I'm so, I feel pathetic, and I forget stories that I've read a hundred times. Um, be, you know, I get whatever. That's why we keep reading the Word, right? Um, mm -hmm. So... I could go on and on in the Old Testament, but uh, we got we got uh, to try to wrap it up at nine. If you want my references, I'll give them to you afterwards. Just come to me, and you can look at my book and write it write it down. Um, but let's just just let's just look at the New Testament some. Let's mm -hmm. just look at um, you know. I mean, there there are so many pro prophecies, promises uh, like that First Chronicles seventeen, like that Jeremiah twenty three over and over and over again. But let's just look, um, how about how about we, um, before we go to Matthew, let's go to one place in Luke chapter 1. This is Luke chapter 1, starting in verse 26. This is um, the angel Gabriel showing up to the Virgin Mary. Um, it, it, the virgin birth. This sorry, is what chapter did you say? Luke one. Um, this is this is another fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. Uh, this is fulfillment of Isaiah seven fourteen that the virgin will be with child, um, and and so the angel Gabriel is coming to announce that the that Mary the virgin will be impregnated, uh, not by any sort of strange sexual union but just by the miraculous work of the Holy Spirit Himself. Um, and and look, look what it says. Look, in this proclamation from the angel, the messenger from God to, to um, Mary. And so in Luke 1, 26. Now in the sixth month, it's talking about six months after this same angel Gabriel visited uh, Mary's relative Elizabeth, um, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph. Check this out. Of the descendants of David. Sent to a virgin engaged to a man who was, whose name was Joseph. And it specifically says that these people are the descendants of David. In the house of David. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was very perplexed at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation this was. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord will give him the throne of his father, David. You see it? So this is at his very conception. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob, that's Israel, forever. And his kingdom will have no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. 
And for that reason, the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. And here it is. We see the humanity and the divinity of Christ right here in this passage. Mm -hmm. the, coming through, a, 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 it's a child a coming through a virgin woman, mm -hmm. impregnated by the Holy Spirit miraculously, um, and he's called the Son of God. Um, so here it is, two times in there, the Son of David, sitting on a throne of David. Um, and now let's just kind of take a quick, quick, quick walk through Matthew. Um, going back to verse chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9 verse 27 says, As Jesus went on from there, this is just Jesus on his doing his earthly ministry. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, crying out, Have mercy on us, son of David! <laughs> These two blind men, they recognized who he was. They saw him for who he was. Son of David, that's no small name for him to call someone. You know, Matthew was written to the Jews, so that's why we're walking through Matthew. We see the son of David thing over and over again. Turn to chapter 12. So here these blind men see him as the source of mercy. That's beautiful. Um, turn to Matthew 12. Verses... Um, 22 and 23. This is, uh, <clears throat> well, that's not it. Look at chapter 11. Chapter 11. Yeah, no, no, no. Chapter 12, you're right. You guys are in the right place. I was in the wrong place. Matthew 12, 22 and 23. Then a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute was brought to Jesus, and he healed him. So that the mute man spoke and saw. All the crowds were amazed and were saying, This man cannot be the son of David, can he? So they see Jesus casting out demons. And they're like, uh, not nah, just any guy can do this. And who are they questioning? Who is he? Is this, is this him? Is this him? Is this the one we've been waiting for? Is this the fulfillment of the promise? This is, is this the son of David? Is this the prophecy? That, that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, and keep going to the right through Matthew chapter 20. <clears throat> Here we see a similar situation of uh, Matthew 9, more blind men. Um, Matthew 20, starting in verse uh, 29. This is just beautiful. What, I'll just read all the way to 34. Um, as they were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him, and two blind men sitting by the road, hearing that Jesus was passing by, they cried out, Lord! So they recognized him as Lord. Have mercy on us! They recognized him as the source of mercy. Son of David! They recognized him as the fulfillment of the promise. The crowd sternly told them to be quiet, but they cried out all the more, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us! And Jesus stopped and called them and said, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Lord, we want our eyes to be opened. And all of this moved with compassion. Remember a couple weeks ago I said over and over again, you see Jesus moved with compassion? Jesus touched their eyes and immediately they regained their sight and they followed him. Amazing, amazing. Uh, turn to the right one more chapter. Uh, chapter 21. This is during the triumphal entry. This is on his way towards um, his crucifixion, ultimately. Um, this is towards the end of his ministry. We're in Matthew 21. And, uh, and he is on his way to <coughs> Jerusalem. And um, crowds following him. And uh, in Matthew 21, verse 9, the crowds going ahead of him and those who followed. That means everyone surrounding him all around. They were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. That's glory to God in the highest. Glory to God to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Verse 10. And when he had entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. And then reading right on from there, 
The next thing he does, he gets into Jerusalem and he goes straight into the temple, the Jewish temple. And so in Matthew 21, starting the very next verse, verse 12, And Jesus entered the temple and drove out all those who were buying and selling in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a robber's den. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he had done, and the children who were shouting in the temple, listen what the children were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. They became indignant and they said to him, Do you hear what these children are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you never read out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies you have prepared praise for yourself? And he left them and went out of the city to Bethany and spent the night there. He just declared himself to be God mm-hmm. in, in his response. Like <laughs> Out of the mouths of these little babies, you have prepared praise for yourself. And their praise, these children are praising him as the son of David. Mm-hmm. And he's equating it to that scripture. That's mm-hmm. amazing. He just claimed to be God right there. Did Jesus ever claim to be God? There it is. People, oh, he never time. claimed it. Yeah, right there's a spot right there. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why... Um, he's killed real soon after this, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I want to I, I want to wrap it up there, um, just because we technically only have four minutes um, left. But um, I just I just want to um, I want to take one more glimpse though of the triumphal entry that we just looked at in chapter twenty one, and um, what was happening? He, he was coming in, and he was riding on a donkey, and. Um, and this was to fulfill prophecy. And you see in Matthew 21, um, verse 4, this took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. Now that's a, that is a um, quote of Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Okay? It's actually a partial quote. There's something significant missing. If you go to Zechariah 9, 9, this is what it says. And I'm looking at um, Matthew 21, 5. I just happen to know there's a missing line directly in the middle. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you. Here's the missing line. Just and endowed with salvation. Just and endowed with salvation endowed with salvation. So, I mean, it's not to be crass or anything, but when we think, you know, we know the term like well-endowed, that that woman was well-endowed, right? Like, you know, there was a very noticeable thing about her, that, you know? That, that's how we, that it sounds crass, but like it, it's, a, it's a way that makes sense. Like, when, when, when you see that woman, there's one thing that, pardon the pun, sticks out. <laughs> there's one thing that, that catches your notice first, you know, and, um, you know, that, that sounds, you know, whatever, it's not, but it's a, it's a real thing. Jesus, what, what shined forth from him, what, what you couldn't, um, what couldn't escape your notice, is he was just, and he was endowed with salvation. Another thing it says about Jesus in Romans um, 3.26, is that he's just, and he's the justifier of those who have faith in him. So that's that's how he is endowed with salvation, is that he justifies those who have faith in him. That's it's amazing. Salvation is go ahead. Are you saying that in verse five there's a missing verse? Is that what you said? If, if, Did I misunderstand? Okay. Uh, no, you didn't misunderstand. Oftentimes when um, Old Testament is quoted in the New Testament. Um, oh, okay. It's just partial quotes. So if you look at it in the Old Testament. If you, exactly. Okay. If you go to Zechariah 9.9, 9, you're going to read everything here. He didn't say it, but it was implied by the reference. Yes, okay. yes. There, there is a line in Zechariah 9.9, 9, right after, Behold, your king is coming to you. It says, Just and endowed with salvation in Zechariah 9.9. 9. So there's no mistake in the Bible. It's like, whatever. I quote scripture all the time, partially. 
you know, um, he purposely like, does that because there's a there's a place in the New Testament where Jesus is quoting old scripture from I think it's specifically from Psalms, and one of you might know where this is from, but he's he's quoting the scripture from Psalms, and he intentionally he intentionally leaves out the scripture that deals with God's wrath, and he only talks about the love and the peace and the joy part of the scripture. And the Pharisees notice that. Mm -hmm. And everybody who's sitting there notices that. Because it's like, it's a well-known psalm. And when he leaves that part out, that's, they, that's they know it. So the thing it unspoken is what sticks in their mind. Yes. And I never thought about that. Because yes. these people know their Bibles. Like, What's way, his name? Heiser. Michael Heiser, he's dead now, but the one that wrote that Unseen Realm book, mm -hmm. he talks about this in some of his commentaries. He's like, he's like, you ever notice when Christ is teaching here, he's quoting old Psalms from the Old Testament, but he leaves out pieces, and the pieces that he leaves out are specifically dealing with judgment and wrath. Mm -hmm. And he only talks about the peace and the joy and the love. He talks about the fruitful things. Because Jesus is, is our peace, our mm -hmm. love, our joy. Mm -hmm. And that, he, he, he talks about how that grabs them. Yeah. Because these people know Scripture. Like, it's been drilled in them oh. since they were little. Memorize, memorize. And so when he's quoting this, and he's leaving these parts out, it really grabs their powerful. attention. That's powerful. Yeah, yeah because no. to us, we, cool. miss, we miss that thing that's in Zechariah 9. Yeah. I mean, other, other examples, Psalms. But... To them, that's the one thing that sticks out. Because yeah. it's fear. Yeah. They're living off that fear. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. all the law can, can do is condemn. Mm -hmm. And Jesus brings that fulfillment of it so that when God looks on us through him, he sees us as righteous. Yeah. There's no mm -hmm. wrath given to those who are within Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why he purposely yeah, leaves those things so out. So it's to kind of remind mm -hmm. the people who are listening to him teach. Of listen, this is what salvation looks like. This mm -hmm. is what, this is what God's intentions are, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that really sticks out at them. They yeah. it really grabs them. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. By the way, it's free conversation now. It's technically not technically not a two. If you have to go get somebody, then go get them. Or um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go out and visit the yard real quick and uh, text space. <laughs> let her know that we're done but still chatting like keep on going if you want if you need to leave then leave i'll be right back in just a minute does that make sense though yeah yeah, like, yeah. yeah it does Today I'm an adult, so I understand things a lot more. And I grew up listening to all this a million times. But now that I'm an adult and I understand government, I understand people, I understand stories, I understand rules and regulations. Now I just look at it from a totally different aspect when I hear it like this. Now. Yeah, I'm in the same. No, like, uh, yeah. yeah, that doesn't come from knowledge, though. That comes from wisdom. Yeah, living life. Yeah, living this life. Because yeah. like. As a young, I mean, I'm young anyway, but as a younger uh, kid, I would like listen to half this stuff, and then my parents would tell me like, "This is what this means," and I was like, "Really?" And they go, "Yeah," but I didn't understand it fully. But now, like every single thing, almost it means something, and it adds up to a bigger equation now. You know, it's just a, it's completely different than it. Yeah, yeah. One one thought that I've had recently is that you know reading reading the Bible and becoming more and more familiar with the stories um, and the the words that are used together, like those those words. Like if I just if I were to read the word flesh when I was sixteen. <clears throat> Versus now when I'm 42, like my understanding of flesh is completely different. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. And it's like, that doesn't necessarily mean that 
if you don't understand the word flesh, that it's not going to accomplish what it needs to mm -hmm. when you read it. But like when you're, you know, when you study it and you, you have an understanding of it, you see these new things, like it is really encouraging. Yeah, that's cool. Um, even if, you know, I, I hit points where I'm like frustrated because like yeah. this doesn't make sense to me and like this is seems cryptic and I don't get it and doesn't seem to be important to me or, or relevant. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. What really helped me was like just studying because that was something that through through listening to Michael Heiser speak and him talk about like this is why they say it this way and it's what it means because he's putting it in the context of like this is what language meant in this day and this culture mm -hmm. and then in, in the Hebrew culture back in those times before the Roman Empire took over everything to Israel was they, they understood concrete there was no abstract mm -hmm. to their daily lives so like there are points in the Old Testament where um, it doesn't say this person was angry because they don't angry is an abstract it's 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 like a thought it's like a you know what I mean so what they did when you're talking about seeing a word like flesh the reason that they use those kinds of words the reason why Jesus when he sat down with the woman at the well and started talking about a water that that comes from me that is different than the water you're drinking out of that well is because that's how they understood things. Mm -hmm. They understood things concretely. Mm -hmm. So what it says in the Old Testament is it doesn't say this person was angry. It says this person's nose was on fire because your nostrils flare when you're angry. So it gives them this vivid, concrete visual mm -hmm. of what it's talking about. If you want to know and who's angry, the knees are. Yeah. And it's the same it's the same context when you see him talking of those things in the New Testament is when he's teaching, he's using illustrations that are easy for Hebrew people to understand. But at the same time, these things are being written in Greek, which allows it to be abstracted. Does that make sense? So it's like um so, so you hear them still talk in the ways of the writings of the Old Testament where they're giving you concrete ideas but in abstract ways. And that's what makes it kind of mysterious mm -hmm. when you read through some of it. And it's like the more you read through it, it kind of reveals itself. The context of time in the Bible, I've noticed, is very important to understanding yes. half of what's said sometimes. Yes. It's like if you want to dig mm -hmm. deep and actually understand it, you have to know what times you're in because that's how people misinterpret all the time. They're like, well, it says this. Well, no, not in today. yeah. today's standards it says this, but in, in their standards it said this, you know. And that pops out in the very first week. Yeah. When we covered verse 1. It yeah. talks about... I'm Paul. I'm a bond servant to yeah. Christ. And he's writing this to the Romans. They they absolutely know what a bond servant yeah. is. So him mentioning that what you missed um, is about a third, maybe even up to a half of the population of the Roman city of, of Rome. Um, they were slaves. Um, or bond they were called bond servants. Many of them willingly in that position. Um, many of them not, but they just saw themselves as one who belonged to another, um, one who um, had who lived their whole life in servitude to another master. And so Paul is saying, I'm a bondservant of, of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I, I belong to him. Mm -hmm. I am his servant. That's my purpose. And, right there. Yeah, and yeah. people got it. Like, mm -hmm. it's speaking to your audience. It's mm -hmm. speaking, it's just, it's awesome, you yeah. know. Yeah, plunging the depths of the word is um, is so fun, but we never, never ever should think we master it, no matter how deep <laughs> we swim. And, and while we swim deep, we need to, um, as it says in First Peter, long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it we may grow in respect to salvation. We need to, we need to not forget 
hey, Jesus was a man. Mm-hmm. That's what we talk about. You know, we need not forget these things. You know, like you know, um, you know, we were talking about like a couple weeks ago, like you know, Paul being called as an apostle. We were talking about the calling of God. Like that was really intense, deep stuff. And actually, we're going to get back to it in a couple weeks, and when we get to verse six. But you know, how how does God save sinners? You know, um, well, in part, He calls them, and that's a powerful calling. Like that. That's that. That's not. That's not Christianity one hundred and one. Yeah. You know, but Jesus was a man, lived on the earth, and you know, he and he was God. You know, and like, you know, that's that's the pure milk of the word. And we need to, we need to never, we need to never think like, oh, we're not going deep. Well, yeah, you are. You're just going deep in the milk of the word. <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and and so like, Nick, what you were speaking to earlier when we were praying for one another, like, ha- sometimes wrestling with the understanding of things, like. I was raised in church. You know, I, I was there since the day I was born. My parents brought me up in the church. I was there the whole time. And there's still stuff to this day where I read it, even though I've read it hundreds of times before. I read it, and it's like things jump out at you. Like never before. Like, oh my gosh, how have I never seen that? Yeah. And made that connection before. Yeah. And it'll happen the rest of your life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, that's why it's called the living word of God. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's just like me with the last week with the numbers and the pictorial thing. I went home and told my wife about that, and she was like, "Really?" Yeah. It's like, "Yeah." I was like, "Man, this is insane! Like how deep it is." Mm-hmm. She, she was. She. By I, the way, is she over there tonight? With the yes. Yeah. yeah cool. She is. Yeah. Cool. I texted Space. I said, we're done, but conversations still happen. If you want to come crash the party, come crash the party. And so they know, you know. This is a, this is <clears throat> totally different topic of what we've been talking about. But um, I really think it's cool. Um, there's like a reason for everything in the Bible. There's like, so like, uh, so I, I remember.